What's the last thing you watched on your phone? Me Dempy. Yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> Hello, my name is Tony Antoniazzi. I am the Member of Parliament for Goa. Now, you won the UK's most marginal seat at the last election. What do you think uh, swung it? Well, well, what swung it was definitely the manifesto and um, just a brilliant team behind me and getting out on the streets meeting people. In that very short period of time, that was really key. Now, how confident were you that you actually were going to win? Is it, was it a case of like the day after you were just frantically packing suitcases and whatever? To be honest with you, I had, I had a plan. It was one lose, um, hide underneath my duvet for the weekend, to win and um, then we'll see how it goes. What did you do immediately after winning your seat? Um, I travelled back to a friend's house and um, drank a little bit too much alcohol, had a little bit of sleep and then went to meet the First Minister and the other MPs um, on about 45 minutes sleep. With a bit of a hangover? Um, no, I'm hardcore, I'm good. <laughs> now you only got involved in politics three years ago. That's right. So what was the main reason you got in? Well, lots of life events happened to me. I think one of the big ones was losing my dad and being a very, very um, uh, whingy woman of a certain age uh, and a single mum. And I just thought, my brother said to me one day, stop whinging and do something about it. So that's what I did. Joined the Labour Party, got involved. So Theresa May invites you to dinner. There you are going through number 10. What have you brought as a gift? <laughs> if I was what going to... What were you to first be... going to say? I feel like you were going to say something and stop yourself. Yeah, I was going to... Yeah, no, I, yeah, I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something like horse manure, um, but no, I would be very, very polite and I would probably take us some Goa gin and some Goa cottage brownies. No, your ancestors were immigrants from Italy who brought with them a recipe for gelato. Can you just tell us a little bit more about You this? have done your homework, haven't you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, my grandfather... My paternal grandfather came over in the First World War. He, we've got certificates of his ice cream making. They had a cafe in Kidwelly in South Wales. Uh, and I'm very proud of those roots. My father kept that going with us by taking us on holiday to Italy every year. And the last few years, I've returned to the hometown of Baradi in, uh, in Italy. Can you make a really good ice cream? I can't, know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you, what's your favourite ice cream? What's your... Oh, I go vanilla every time. Vanilla? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't mess around, just go for the classic. <laughs> what's your favourite thing to order at McDonald's? <laughs> That is a very guilty laugh, so I'm expecting something big here. <laughs> There's a bit of a family joke going on with me and my son because we can't manage to finish the grand Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've described arriving at Westminster as feeling like I was in the land of giants. Who are these yeah. giants? I, it's just the building, I think. It's the, it's the, the whole kind of, you know, the size of everything. Everything is so enormous. And I think, it, for me, it was very, very much like the first day in university. Yeah, terrifying. Terrifying, yeah. Was the behaviour like university as um, well, Freshers' uh, Week? I have to say, I could draw some comparisons with Freshers' <laughs> Week.